From getting into a fight with a rival coach in the middle of a match, to retiring so she could pursue a career as an adult content creator, here are some of Liz Cambage's most problematic moments of all time. This Aussie baller undoubtedly rocked the WNBA with her mind-blowing skills, and a court presence that screams domination. But let's not ignore the elephant on the court here. Cambage's journey has been far from smooth, including a fair share of controversies that can't seem to leave her trail. This isn't made any better by the fact that the Aussie isn't one to hold back, making headlines for her outspoken nature both in the US and down under. But let me tell you, some of the incidents she's been involved in would make even the most seasoned fans raise a brow. Let's start with the fiery showdown between Cambage and former Connecticut Sun coach Kurt Miller. It was a steamy day on May 23, 2021, when a heated conversation erupted between these two on the sidelines. Nobody knew what they were talking about at the time, though, but not for long, since Cambage took to her Instagram story and explained what happened, claiming that Miller had mocked her for weighing 300 pounds while protesting a foul call to the ref. Yikes! Me personally, I wouldn't be making fun of a six foot eight giant that could probably crush my skull without breaking a sweat to her face. That guy's got bigger balls than anything they were dribbling on the court that day. Um, it's going to be a part of our identity. We need to look at it this year um, as ultimately we think our path for the future on how it works. Cambage made it clear that there was a big difference between trash talk and crossing the line, though, causing the league to take action, suspending Miller for a game and slapping him with a hefty $10,000 fine. Damn, that's gotta sting. Miller did later apologize for his comments, claiming that he'd said it in the heat of the moment during an already stressful match. But the damage had already been done. The cam baggage doesn't end here, though, because Cambage's time with the Sparks was nothing but wholesome. First up, there was the whole jersey number fiasco, where Cambage had her mindset set on rocking a number 8 jersey, despite the fact that the Sparks had already retired the coveted number, in order to pay homage to the great Delisha Milton Jones. But don't worry, because this anything but gentle giant had a plan B up her sleeve, deciding to go for number 1 instead, which happened to be owned by another one of her teammates, Amanda Zowie B. Talk about a clash of the jersey titans. Zowie was approached by the team coach, who asked her to give up the number for Cambage, but she declined, explaining that the number was important to her, and rightfully so too, since she had it a whole lot longer than the office. Newbie. But of course, Cambage wasn't ready to give up on her quest for that number one though, and she kept annoying her team like a toddler in the toy aisle of your local Texaco, until they gave her the jersey just to shut her up. Yep, you heard me right. She cried her way into getting what she wanted, and guess what? Zawi didn't find out about the change until the team later announced it on their social media, which meant that she couldn't even protest it. Imagine losing something that important to you because your teammate is a literal giant baby. I can't even begin to believe what she must have gone through, especially knowing that the team later suspended her for asking for the number back. Gotta love sports politics, huh? So how did Cambage thank her team for this daylight robbery? Well, obviously, she threw another temper tantrum and quit in the middle of a match. During her relatively short 25-game stint with the Sparks, Cambage didn't hold back once, unleashing her frustrations every chance she got. According to reports, she would openly criticize her teammates, calling them out for ignoring her on the court and not passing her the ball when she asked for it. Calling her a diva would be underselling it. It got to a point where even her teammates got fed up with her, fighting back by intentionally passing her the ball whenever she wasn't in the clear, causing her to miss shots and ruin her averages. Jordan, an all-defensive first team in 2019 when she led the league in steals for the Seattle Storm. Oh, nice back cut there, or uh, drop step rather by Liz Cambage and Now that's the kind of malevolent compliance that I like to see. This even went on during her last game with the Sparks, where after an embarrassing 84-66 blowout loss, Cambage had finally had enough. She didn't waste a single moment storming off to the locker room, getting dressed for an early exit, but not before leaving a final parting message. I can't do this anymore. Best of luck to you guys. Looks like the bully ended up becoming the bully. Say what you want about it. But if you got a player that's constantly arguing with their teammates, then you shouldn't be surprised that nobody wants them back. It's not just her team that was fed up with Cambage, though, as players and critics from every corner of the WNBA world seem to have a thing or two to say about her. When it comes to getting that W, the Aussie has been accused of using some pretty dirty tactics on court, with critics claiming that she uses her physicality and towering size to intimidate her opponents, pushing the boundaries of fair play. Now, don't get me wrong, physicality is part of the game, but Cambage seemed to veer over the edge from aggressive play to straight-up unsportsmanlike behavior. Her dramatic exit from the Sparks 
which also caused people to question her dedication to the sport, with fans and critics claiming that she's far too emotional to be playing high-intensity sports. On the other hand, though, her coaches applauded her undeniable skill and potential, seeing her as a force to be reckoned with. But they're not wrong. She truly was a game-changer who could easily dominate the court, which is why it's a shame that she never learned how to be a team player. She even called out the Australian national team for being racist, all because they didn't include her in any of their promotional shots. Really? Are you seriously surprised that the national team itself doesn't want anything to do with her? Looks like somebody needs an ego check. But if you thought things couldn't possibly get any worse, then brace yourselves for one of the most jaw-dropping incidents of WNBA history. One that sent shockwaves throughout the world right before the Tokyo Olympics. As part of the Australian national team, Cambridge found herself at the center of another raging controversy. And trust me, it's not pretty. One day while practicing for their upcoming matches during a training camp, she got into an altercation with some members of the Nigerian basketball team. And while I don't know how it started, I sure know how it ended. Both teams tried to break up the scuffle before it escalated, but Cambridge didn't need to use force to get caught in this controversy, hurling derogatory remarks towards the Nigerian team. According to the people present when it went down, the Aussie could be heard calling the Nigerian team monkeys. And if that wasn't bad enough, she's also told them to go back to their third world countries. As you can imagine, this didn't sit well with the Olympics Commission. And the fallout from this incident was more intense than any buzzer beater anyone had ever seen. The news spread like wildfire, making headlines in every country. The backlash was immediate and fierce. And before they could officially disqualify Cambridge for unprofessional behavior, she decided to drop out of the competition, citing mental health concerns. If people would take it well or take it badly, because it was pretty open and honest. Um, but I think it did, a lot of people did connect with it. Um, I guess, yeah, well, it was a big release for me. It wasn't entirely inaccurate, though. I mean, racism counts as a mental illness, right? After all these controversies, it came as no surprise that Cambage announced that she was stepping away from the WNBA. It's, it's such a hard, it's such a hard conversation to have at the moment. But at the end of the day, I just, I just hope there's a way that everyone gets to play the sport that they, they want to play. She decided to take a three-week break in July 2022, which developed into a permanent departure, surely much to the pleasure of many in the sport. Later, the towering sensation decided to cash in on her fame by opening an account on an adult website. Yep, you heard that right. Subscribers could pay to catch a glimpse of some raunchy pics of the basketball queen. Talk about a career change. When asked about the change, she admitted that she was scared to make the move originally, but with support from her friends and family, she decided to go through with it. Plus, with every other member on the site also being an influencer, she decided to hop on the bandwagon and make some dough too. You gotta hand it to her. She really knows how to seize an opportunity when she sees it. With Cambridge already having a massive online presence, her account easily skyrocketed to success, amassing a jaw-dropping 27,000 likes within just a few months of launching her account. Gonna have to do some hands-on research myself once I'm done recording. So, from retiring in order to pursue a career as an adult content creator, to getting into a fight with a rival coach in the middle of a match, these were Liz Cambridge's most problematic moments of all time.